Uh, I want to start the session by introducing um, our uh, very honorable guest, Priya. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute honor and pleasure, you know, speaking with you today. Um, Priya Patankar is a marketing and communications professional with over two decades of experience. She has managed and led content, PR, CRM and demand generation teams across leading pharma, telecom, e-commerce companies and has worked for a not-for-profit. Non, non she currently leads the corporate communications team at PhonePay where she has helped build the PR, CRM and content teams ground up. And in her free time, she loves reading, writing, and mentoring young people. Thank you so much for joining us, Priya. Thanks, Riley. Thanks for having me over. Looking forward to our chat. Likewise. Um, so, you know, I have a couple of questions uh, prepared, which I want to, you know, ask you. But to the audience, uh, please feel free to ask your questions. There is a Q&A tab right down there. So, you know, as soon as you, uh, you know, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to line up those questions there. Okay, uh, to start with Priya, um, you obviously had a phenomenal career of, of over two decades in the industry and we would love to know a little bit about your journey and your love for the world of PR and communications. Um, so Riley, honestly, I was, uh, I am in some ways an accidental comms person. I come from a family of doctors and engineers and uh, I'm probably the only one who's not a doctor and engineer, even in the third generation. So uh, it, it was not easy uh, convincing my parents because uh, I was a pre-med student. I was preparing uh, for my medical entrances. And after doing that for a while, I actually sat them down and told them this is something I absolutely do not want to do with my life. I couldn't uh, imagine a profession in which I was not writing or talking to people. Those were just the two things I loved doing. Um, and you know, when you come from a family where everybody is a doctor and engineer, they they just couldn't understand what what kind of profession does that even mean what is a comms professional at all yeah. so it was i mean it was fairly uh, uh, it was a struggle convincing them uh, move from science to arts in college uh, then uh, of course once i switched to arts i just realized this is what i want to do i was fairly active in all college activities i i just realized you know, I, I, the decision of sort of moving from medicine to English and history just made perfect sense. I did liberal arts, did a, used to do a lot of reading, writing and theatre in school and college in general. Wow. Um, my first job was actually at Times of India, Times, India Times.com had just started. This was probably 21 years back, if I remember correctly. And... Um, I was hired to write a, a section which no longer exists, of course, those were the cool dot com uh, boom days. And I think in six months, I was just writing it on my own rather than having an editor managing it for me, which made me realize that, okay, so uh, I'm on sort of on the right track. Uh, my boss at India Times moved to a telecom company and she just took me there with her, which is where, which was where my initiation into the world of Copcom really. And this was a telecom startup. I was a really young person, was pretty much exposed to the, uh, the, the various facets of Copcom, right? The internal and external communications, the media. I think one thing is people don't realize that there is a lot more than just talking to the media when it comes to Copcom. The default setting always is, oh, okay, Copcom team, they're the folks who just talk to the media, the cool people who talk to the media. So that's not true. Uh, we work, I mean, most Copcom teams work very closely with HR on some of the internal communication initiatives. We, uh, uh, at that point, we, I used to work very closely with the product marketing teams on some of the product collateral. So it's a, it's very varied and the skill sets you bring in are quite different. So uh, that's how my journey really started. And uh, I'd say it's been 20 phenomenal years and I have a team of very young people and I tell them, you know, that um, I still feel like getting up every morning and coming and doing this. So it's it's a decision I've not regretted a single moment. I look forward to my day, uh, you know, and uh, it, that's that's finally what uh, what you do uh, uh, should be like, right? You, we spend so much time and energy uh, working uh, on things we, we, we work on. So I, I'd say, I mean, never regretted my decision. Uh, and only thing I'd probably add is that 
I see myself more as a problem solver and a communicator than a very classic PR person because some part of my life you know demand generation can't be more different than PR you're looking at numbers you're looking at building a sales pipeline you're looking at getting leads which which is very very different from what we traditionally associate with uh, with PR so it's it's been a journey which has also been interesting because i was allowed to do so many things which possibly didn't didn't i was not forcefully bucketed is how i see it that's fantastic and uh, priya if i may ask how did you find phone pay i mean this is fairly different from what you've done earlier um yeah so it was i mean i i'll not deny it i was at actually at flipkart Mm-hmm. and uh, i was um, again in the crm team we we were the folks who send all the I mean, part of the team which is to send all the promotional communication to customers mm-hmm. in a fairly different role that is uh, my ex uh, one of my friends uh, uh, and my ex manager moved to phonepay uh, and he referred me here he asked me to come and chat with the team at phonepay uh, i just met met him met met our ceo uh, samir nigam and uh, demonetization had just happened so digital payments had taken off and i did see the value in terms of what uh, th- that space was uh, S- samir is a very very persuasive communicator uh, very strong vision and in general i i i mean when i heard him speaking i i felt sure and we were very small then we were just probably uh, when i joined we were 40 people we have 2200 people now so uh, it was a very small team i was going to be the first employee in the copcom pr content and crm team so <laughs> i was employee <laughs> one yeah i mean we were really really small right at that point yeah. um it i i did realize it's going to be an interesting roller coaster but i i thought let let's see how it goes and it's been 5 years now uh, next month i actually i complete 5 years so it's been a beautiful journey <laughs> i mean seeing the company grow seeing the functions grow uh, seeing the people i've hired uh, grow blossom become their own people it's it's always very very interesting and exciting actually that way must be very fulfilling to see that yeah yeah absolutely yes uh you know what you've done um you know the spaces you've fairly you export expose uh, observed a lot of different spaces and my next question is kind of taking you from that to ask you you know what is uh, what kind of a um, difference have you observed between uh, you know the fintech consumer space why you know versus the other spaces that you've explored is there a difference in consumer behavior or user behavior in these two spaces see i think fintech is uh... in fintech building customer trust is really critical especially uh, we are a digital payment app one where uh, you're talking about money uh, sort of moving through the uh, through us so it's very important that customers trust you uh, you are seen as uh, an entity which uh, you know which has the customers back it's it's more important say than probably some of my earlier since where say i was in an, in an e-commerce company money causes anxiety and uh, as um, so that's that's something i always keep in mind and i've kept in mind all the five years i've worked here you know the way i talk to a customer the way i'm communicating since for a very long time i was doing crm and i understood the nuance of how we need to sort of talk to customers when we are uh, dealing with money the second is of course it's a highly regulated space there are things you can and can't say you need to be very cl- careful about that um you need to be careful about uh, the information you are sharing how you are talking to customers i think the interesting trap we always i i always uh, you have to sort of uh, steer my team away from you know whenever we have very young people join they they say why can't our communication sound like an xyz cool brand so i i have to sort of tell them see we are also in some ways seen like a bank we bring the same gravitas with possibly some uh, uh, you know the user experience built in on top uh, so you always have to keep that in mind and the second thing is uh, it it's used by such a vast demographic right uh, i mean digital payment apps are now almost ubiquitous my mom uses it my driver is using it uh, my son has started uh, <laughs> paying via phone pay so i mean it's just a very very wide demographic there are college going students there are older people so you also have to keep that in mind when you're uh, sort of talking to your customers it's you have to target it right you have to think about it in a way in which it doesn't cause anxiety if if uh, if there is a bad experience 
so i think it's a very different space that way uh, and we are a little more cautious and careful i i definitely am about how i am talking to my customers than versus uh, say my previous stint that the at uh, at flipkart where right. po- possibly the offering was very very different correct yes that's fair um okay so obviously you know with um, with over 20 years of experience you have been in a leadership role for a while now and my next question probably comes to that and you know taking uh, inspiration from breaking the bias and you know everything that we've been doing around women's day and the challenges we've been facing i've been in conversation with a lot of uh, leaders you have been in leadership role for a while and uh, i was wondering if you could share your experiences as a woman leader in the industry and you know were there any resistance or specific challenges that you observed you know uh, in your journey uh see i uh once i step into office i mean i i just want to be really honest with you i just stop thinking of myself as a woman or yes. man i mean i am in that zone i am just like a horse with blinkers and i have to do work and get things done right that's how you start functioning sure i mean once i'm outside home i have a family my parents live with me so i i have a lot possibly have a lot more responsibilities but the whatever the as i'm in office i'm just completely focused on what i am doing mm-hmm. uh so i'd say see leaders are not gender or age specific uh, because uh, now of course things have uh, people with 20 years experience are more reliability because you everybody is young <laughs> so i joke about it i just skew the average age the other side because i'm much older so um, i'd say finally it's people who inspire you to do something challenge the status quo shake up things and get things done that's how i i see it uh getting from middle to senior management is the challenge i'd say that's where uh, women struggle the most because you have a lot happening in your life Okay, I mean you're getting married. There are kids. There are more responsibilities. The choices you have to make are between, um, you know, spending more time at work and sort of uh, figuring out what you need to do with your personal life. That's the hard part. Once you're in leadership and you're um, at that point, also what tends to happen is you're slightly much older and things have settled in. Uh, there, of course, it's about performance, making sure uh, you know you're constantly pushing the envelope. but i find the when it comes to women i find the challenge breaking into uh, senior management roles that's where you see the maximum attrition and women sort of moving out of the workforce that's always i find the hard part and i've i've struggled to through it as well i've had my fair share of struggles there for sure but nothing on the professional front i mean as a woman leader you've never really had any resistance right uh Uh, early on yes of course i mean all kinds of i, I have uh, like i have so many stories from uh, uh as a young person when i wanted to ra- do a little more serious writing right case studies and uh, you know product white papers i was once told to my face that you don't look serious enough to be doing that so i said how do i look serious enough so i was told you probably ne- you you look like somebody who's paying too much attention to how she dresses and it was it was such a shock to me because i was still a young person and i didn't i didn't really think of it like that right what does seriousness at work or wanting to take on more complex work have to do with how you dress and uh, i i do want to tell you that uh, extremely ashamed of myself but i i actually made an effort to dress very badly for a while so that <laughs> so that i was taken a lot to see so when i look back at it i also find it funny see biases did exist in the workplace it's let's not Uh, assume it was uh, not there but what i'm trying to say is once you become you are in a leadership position you're also in a position of strength yes so uh, there are things you can actually influence and change you have a voice you have a seat on the table you're a part of the decision making so you're you are actually calling the shots in many ways of course there uh, when, once you're a leader it is all about making sure you get the right things done show results that's always a challenge and that i feel is is gender agnostic if you're showing results people will stop questioning your gender middle to senior management yes for sure hard it it's climbing up the corporate ladder takes time effort lots of sacrifices to be made it's not easy 
and um, you know of course you've had you still do have a very very busy schedule i'm sure and there are a lot of challenges uh, on the professional front but uh, you know how important do you think is uh, personal development and how do you make the time and you know this is i'm sure people who are listening and you know everybody who will listen to this will learn from that but how do you make the time to continuously develop yourself uh i sleep less <laughs> i stick to the bare minimum as because yeah i do have a lot going on in my life in general personal life as well uh, uh i read a lot because i think uh, if you are uh, as communicators you need to be able to i think one thing i've noticed is most people underestimate the importance of good writing most pr professionals and copcom professionals you talk to will assume that they can peek their way through most situations that's not true you sh- you should be a solidly good writer i think it's extremely important so i do make sure i read a lot i make sure i write a lot i do work writing uh, because the advice i give my team is you guys need to be writing every day i've also ensured i do that <laughs> it it should always begin from the top if i am advising them to be right so i make sure i write most uh, pieces of collateral at least i do a few a month so that i am in touch with the uh, kind of writing we are supposed to do i understand what are the challenges my team is facing i'm so i'm not just in the review phase i'm also in the draft creation phase it's important you should always you should always do that i feel uh i think uh, besides that i mean i am uh, besides reading and writing i uh, i am into fitness i like doing yoga um uh, i love spending time with my 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 son he's he's 17 um uh, love talking to him in general uh, and uh, you know it it does de-stress me i think you need me time you need to be able to switch off uh pr is a 24/7 profession anybody who's intending to do that should be ready for that there are no off days uh newspapers come every day uh, digital medium means there is news being shared every single day all the time so we are on twitter we need to be on digital mediums it, 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 as pr professionals it's even more important we keep our mental health in mind Absolutely. so you yeah you need to switch off you need to find things which give you joy and pleasure there's there's a world out there outside work also love what you do but then love other things outside work also that's really important that's possibly where the whole conversation about work life integration is really coming in right and particularly now that we are adapting to a remote and hybrid mode of work yeah yeah that's true um did you have a role model or 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 an inspiration while you were growing up or a leader that you really looked up to uh i think my husband's uh, grandmother is very inspiring and uh I just married it into this uh, very lucky to have married into a very very progressive family. I think it's made a lot of difference to uh, the person I've become and I remember when I got married she actually wrote me a letter which spoke about how I should always have my own life and my own hobbies and coming from somebody who was in her 70s at that time it it was very surprising. She was a principal of a school who got married off early uh, decided to educate herself and at 16 got married educated herself and finally ended up becoming the principal of a school so and was very very strong strongly a believer in having a sense of self i think that is extremely important um, in general i think having a sense of self and knowing who and what you are is important helps you in your work life there are so many ups and downs um, and every day is is um, is not going to be a happy day So in general you have to believe in yourself you know keep keep putting in that effort and keep looking out uh, looking at the bigger picture rather than just sort of struggling with the smaller setbacks there would always be setbacks i mean that's what makes the 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 victory even better right once you've gone through the grind so i think i'm i really really admire her and as i said just a very progressive woman and uh, i'm sure she we talk about our struggles for them uh, the struggle was to get educated and then to work uh, i'm sure it was really hard so she's she's been extremely inspirational and i and i still have that letter i thought it was so beautiful <laughs> so i have retained that all these years fantastic coming to um, you know some of the challenges and you know i've been reading up a little bit um, but some of the challenges that we are facing around diversity and uh, you know gender diversity um a very 
this is probably not something a lot of people want to hear but you know reports are kind of saying that more often than not women are impediments to their own careers they either do not believe in themselves sometimes you know the typical imposter syndrome kind of comes in they do not believe in themselves or they their capabilities or sometimes they don't even speak up as uh, much as they should i want you to tell us what your take on this is first and um, how do you think women can uh, make themselves heard um, or even you know try to get a seat on the table uh one is of course get your own table <laughs> if you're not calling me in a meeting and letting me speak i'll call mine <laughs> i mean jokes apart i think you're right uh especially when uh, women are younger i do find this struggle and i i have on multiple occasions mentored my own team and told them speak up if you have a good idea make sure you're heard drop a mail make sure you're highlighting the work you're doing they're very bad at that also by the way a lot of times you know we do great work but then we assume that's fine this is not something we need to be talking about no we should we need to make sure if we've signed up for something and if we've achieved or overachieved we highlight that enough uh the second thing also is uh, i think occasionally i also find uh, it a uh, uh, a personality type i mean it's it's shy people find it harder to speak in larger forums that also tends to happen but yeah women do display that and i have seen that on multiple occasions uh, i since i had to possibly be heard out in a large group and had to sort of push and make my way even fighting with my parents i honestly never had this problem i always spoke in meetings i still do that i just assume that worst case it's a stupid question it's fine it's it's it doesn't it doesn't change my life in any way if somebody says hey we just discussed this or you should already know that i don't i genuinely don't find that i think you have to just think that you're genuinely trying to learn something and it's fine there are no stupid questions and most colleagues are coming from that place first of all give them the benefit of doubt of <laughs> wanting to hear what you say the second also is i think what i noticed is that if i'm very confident and comfortable about what is being discussed i would be happier sharing my opinion so do become a subject matter expert Correct. contribute to the conversation in a way which is which is it is moving forward yes. so uh, i mean for instance if i'm in a meeting in which i tell a business head that the way we are running demand generation doesn't make sense and your uh, you know pipeline can go up by 2x there's no reason why he wouldn't want to hear me uh, you know the point also is be very confident in what you are doing and saying uh, understand your part of the world really well and that confidence will eventually start flowing in what you are saying but yes it is important even if you are uncomfortable you should talk you should make sure you are heard start in smaller group forums uh you know places where you think you're not likely to be judged and then sort of once you're in a position of power as i said make make your own table <laughs> call your own meeting where you call the shots and you decide what is said that's fine i think that's great advice being prepared is probably the key to and you know starting small that's great advice thank you for that uh, priya um another thing you know that comes again you know this is from the mckinsey report that recently came in and uh, they say that you know men and women they we tend to essentially end up doing the same work but we are paid differently across different levels uh, and different positions so i wanted to ask you what your take is on the gender pay gap that exists in the industry today and you know how do we if at all you know take steps and what kind of steps can we take to bridge the gap um that is a funny story is i was once hired by a manager who told me that you were the cheapest candidate <laughs> but you could have negotiated so much better uh, but uh, we still hired you because you were good and of course the money you were asking made it a no brainer in some ways i guess <laughs> but the point also is that uh, yes i have also been guilty of possibly especially when i was younger not negotiating too well i think uh it's years of conditioning it it does take some time uh, to sort of uh, let go of the imposter imposter syndrome and do are you worth it and will companies be willing to pay but now i think uh after years of wisdom all i can say is let your work shine and if you think you are underpaid you should bring it up uh, again there is nothing lost if you think there is reluctance to address it move on life is just too short to stay and fight with people who don't see the value in what you do it's not worth it 
because if you are at every step uh, because this uh, 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 the difference will just show it every step Correct. so if they are not valuing you there would be somebody outside who will value it. important thing is be good at what you do as i said hmm. I, i mean be so good they just can't ignore you <laughs> i mean cliched as it sounds but yeah it, it 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 is true if you are good there is there would be enough people who would value you it kind of goes back to again asking for what we want right speaking yeah. up negotiating asking for what we want and that's that again so the power kind of lies with us i think we are the ones who have to make the change uh thank you for that priya um so you know you uh, did mention this and you know you did uh, say that you know when from the middle management to the senior management when we, that is when women are kind of dropping out of the workforce and that is uh, reiterated in a lot of uh, you know articles that are coming out today and uh, reports are actually saying that a lot of women are dropping out of the workforce after childbirth or marriage or uh, you know they are choosing to take up roles which are less challenging to keep up with the challenges that they face at home now this trend it kind of only increased during the pandemic um what do you think we can do to solve for this problem uh see i think in some ways we also look at uh, we also have to see uh, the pandemic uh, a work from home phenomena staying for a while i i'd say there would be enough organizations which would be willing to sort of look at a more hybrid work mode for sure i think women women have had it hard we were the ones who were looking after kids cooking cleaning and um, uh, i saw uh, there were some men helping out and uh, sort of putting out enough posts about it no male bashing i i live with two men who do most of the work but i i do see there was a difference in the distribution of how duties were done so it's not been hard i i mean i want to tell you my story uh, i had uh, when i had my son uh, 17 18 years back you know work from home was fairly unheard of and uh, my son was born probably a week earlier than i had in my head plan young mom had absolutely no idea kids don't stick to deadlines the way we do in offices so uh, I actually 4 days after I came back home I went back to work much to the shock of everybody. Uh, there was something I had to finish. I needed 10 more days. So I had a one week old kid and I actually went back <laughs> for and did 15 days of work which I had in my head planned. It was hard but I absolutely wanted to do it. Uh, loved my kid. Um I didn't see any there were no medical complications uh, and I I was very matter of fact about it and this was in a time where uh, officers were not so open to the idea of uh, allowing women to work from home right Correct. and uh, till my kid was uh, slightly older I actually worked from home uh, took a pay cut I was okay doing that because I wanted to continue working and doing what I love but wanted it to be around for my kid for a while mm-hmm. once my kid was older of course I uh, uh, told my husband that your your turn now and i'm guilt free doing what i love now so <laughs> i think it's it's hard you need to set up systems and processes need to make sure you have enough help at home ask for help they are terrible at it yes. unfortunately there is this myth of being a superwoman which is perpetuated and we all carry that weight i carry it sometimes i i want to show everybody i'm never unwell i'm never down um i think we need to stop doing that unfortunately the media the world we are of at uh, a part of wants us to live this myth the second thing is i think you should also uh, try and figure out what parts of your life and work are critical do them well and let go of other things especially if you're a work from home mom or a mom who's trying to deal with too much in her life in a certain age uh we need to sort of um, figure out the critical parts and let do uh, I, i mean again i'll give you an example i was being offered a lot of jobs when my kid was younger which needed me to travel i wanted to work i would have loved to travel but i couldn't at that point mm. so i was pretty honest with telling them i can't do it but they said you'll hit a ceiling for a while when it comes to your career i said fine it's a marathon i mean i'm these um, I think one funny thing I also notice is young people have this. I am thirty and I am not here. I am thirty-five. I tell them lifespans have gone up. It's fine. I get there at fifty. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, these are all artificial constructs we have in our head, right? Uh, what will we do with the rest of our lives if at thirty I am going to just achieve everything and burn out? So I think uh, make thing make time for things you like doing. Space space it out. 
think of your career as a journey and think of even in your personal lives what part of your lives are important and need attention so at different points there will be different parts uh, you will have to slow down a little possibly that promotion will take slightly longer that's fine it's okay it's worth it so just balance it out <laughs> Priyanka is asking a question if you had mom guilt during you know the time when you had uh, my mom made sure she made me feel very guilty uh, my husband was very cool about it uh, and he told me it's all right it's fine <laughs> go for it uh, priyanka honestly if i hadn't finished my project i would have just i would have been a worse mom is what i th- thought of and you know when i look back my kid is almost an adult now and i I I look back and I see a very balanced kid who understands his mom is doing what she likes and she's there for him. It's fine. They were kids turn out fine. They are very resilient. So yeah, I did have mom guilt. I will not deny it. But uh, there were enough people telling me it's okay. Move on. <laughs> it's it's 10 days. It's fine. <laughs> we'll figure it out. That's fantastic being able to have that support from Yeah. Your completely. Completely agree. Um Moving on to uh, the next question again this is probably one of the last very serious questions I'll ask you and I've been throwing a lot of heavy questions at you but uh, the predicted uh, time to close the gender gap during the pandemic it's increased from 99.5 to 135 years and uh, so this kind of draws my attention to something that is not spoken about enough the important topic of allyship you know when we talk to men um and you know probably men in power men in leadership roles they do have the intent to help but a lot of times they don't know how um i wanted to ask you priya what can to you can we do you know both at the home front and you know at a work front what can the you know and our allies are the men do in our lives to ease this for us see i mean it's important to have allies at home um, you need allies because they need to understand uh, if if you you're ambitious and uh, you know you seek something from life extremely important for your partner your boyfriend your husband to know that and understand and appreciate that right because um, if you're sort of uh, going to kill that ambition and be somebody or not you'll be extremely frustrated and unhappy it's it, there's no point so it's important to sort of be very clear on what you like for instance i am a workaholic my husband is able to manage uh, he believes more possibly do do i do balance things out but between the two of us two of us i find me being more driven when it comes to my my work but that's fine i mean we we balance it out as as a couple and as parents and individuals we appreciate that about each other right yes, it's fine i think you should be very unapologetic about it about being ambitious or the fact that you just absolutely love your work it it fulfills you and <laughs> makes you happy what's what's wrong about it if it were a guy we'd say great and for why why should the different set of rules apply for me i'm a working professional at the end of the day uh, on allies yes find find sponsors at work uh, mentors uh, some of um, while there have been some not great stories some of the best mentors i have found i have been men i mean i have been referred here by a manager who's actually referred me to other jobs wow. so I, i i tell him you're my mentor you've you've seen that spark in something extra in me and you you know you've gone ahead and sort of help help me uh, get some great roles yeah. so find those sponsors find great mentors uh, it is important for us to have sponsors not just among women among men because let's face it most companies still have the leadership and uh, top management continues to be men so you need to have people who believe in you we need to uh, find the right people at the same time have a group of women you can sort of network with and understand things from their perspective if if it's not your organization look at women and other organizations i think most women are very open and willing to uh, chat so i do have a network of women i reach out to from time to time especially if i am seeking professional uh, advice on certain things right and at the same time within the organization also i believe we, we need that network of people and sponsors so it should be in some ways gender agnostic but yes as i said the hard fact is men are sort of uh, possibly more in leadership you need to have men to mentor you and believe when you it, it things will change eventually but right now yes that is true and um, 
yeah i mean do you is that i don't know again you know this is probably going a little off topic but i want to ask you like you said you know these networks that are already there are there any networks that you know of that any formal networks that have been set up that you know people can probably enroll into that women can so i so i'm honestly not there are enough i've, I've uh, seen a lot of them leap club etc uh, my network is more uh, uh, senior colleagues who uh, who i look up to in fact i've uh, had folks ping me on <laughs> linkedin oh, and uh, ask me for advice occasionally and i am happy to uh, find time that's how i met priyanka priyanka and i are linkedin uh, connects now yeah. so uh, and we bounce off ideas but the point really is that if there is a uh, somebody in leadership you look up to and seek mentorship you can actually uh, uh, set up a connect uh, in my case of course as i said it was more colleagues who i had worked with who had uh, who were probably much ahead of me when it uh, came to the field i am a part of now so i reach out to them from time to time and try and figure out how they are thinking of things um, it's helped me keeping in touch uh, uh, in general helps women are also very bad at that we keep our keeping in touch very tactical i've noticed Yes. Uh, when we are professionally networking we keep it very very tactical that's not a great idea occasionally reaching out to somebody you look up to congratulating them and generally making sure uh, you uh, uh, keep in touch over a longer period of times keeps that uh, relationship going it's important we do that uh, also that's fair thank you for that priya um again you know the next question is probably a little light again but you know there are a lot of aspiring women leaders and a lot of us here who want to ask you if you have any advice for us you've been okay. on on the way and have a lot noted down but yeah uh it's slightly boring but <laughs> i'd say work hard and don't really bother about the optics you know sometimes we assume a lot of uh, upward management and all that matters no finally if you're good at what you do um, and your output speaks for us yourself people will admire you so i think it is very old fashion but turn up every single day make each day matter uh, enjoy what you do it's important uh, working with people you like is also very important because that wants you to make you want want to get up and turn up at work so uh, do work which you like doing with people you like doing and generally give it your best don't i mean there are no shortcuts even after 20 years uh, i'd say uh, make each day count <laughs> that's that's really important in life right thank you priya i think with that i would like to open this up to whoever is attending the session uh, if you can maybe start asking your questions on the question and answer tab that is there or on the chat feel free to Uh, do that as well but we'd love to we have some time and i think we can make use of this opportunity to ask priya questions if we have any okay doesn't look like there are questions doesn't look like okay there there is a question here i see it okay rashmi uh, rashmi has a question How do we keep raising the bar against the expectations? Uh that's hard because Rashmi first of all we have um, as women we just set our own expectations so high right <laughs> I think the bar is anyway so raised uh let's say one thing is if you think you're hitting a ceiling in what you are doing uh, look for uh, uh, if if you're in an organization where you feel you want to continue and be a part of uh look for uh, areas which are outside your immediate area and uh, of work I, and surprisingly a lot of organizations are very very open and happy to do it i've seen that through my jobs mm -hmm. so even when i was hired to do internal comms and i actually wanted to be writing white papers i went and pitched to the business head and made sure she gave me a trial business a white paper to write and that's how i learned so most functions i think when you think you're hitting a ceiling and you know you've become the best and there's nothing new to learn uh, find something else which you would rather be doing and uh, 
make a pitch for it go for it don't restrict yourself thinking that um, you know how will this be perceived the worst case is they'll say no it's fine you can try again in a couple of months right so i think don't uh, don't stop learning that's really really important is how i see and don't be shy to ask that's it's fine the worst that can happen is they can say no and then you move on that's fine it's okay <laughs> the uh, next question is from disha she is asking if you've uh, seen any other women colleagues making uh, you know mistakes in their career that you've loved learned from and uh, you know if yes what it was if you'd like to share it with us uh i think uh, mistakes in their career i mean see i think with women right there is there is so much of emotional baggage uh, leaving an amazing job because of husband moving up and how do you can you classify that as a mistake hard to say a lot of choices have been personal um i have seen a, a brilliant colleague actually completely burn out that i thought was something she could have avoided yeah. uh was extremely stressed for years and years was unwilling to acknowledge it not willing to take help and reached a stage where she completely burnt out and could just not function wow uh, that is one thing i learned which is why i was again having a very interesting conversation with a young person in my team who was saying i'm 30 and i'm only this i told her that's fine <laughs> do not have these artificial age constructs in your mind we we live till 75 what are we going to do after we've achieved everything at 40 we have 35 more years to go let's assume so the point is i think uh, uh, taking care of your physical and mental health making sure at eating right exercising sleeping those are really important things sometimes we these are very fundamental things which seem very boring and everybody knows them but i actually saw a brilliant colleague completely burn out and took her 6 uh, 7 years to actually get back to a functional level and now uh, i'm i'm really rooting for her she's getting back to work but that was one mistake i consciously made sure i don't do i i've started thinking i've I've downloaded Headspace. I meditated and died. I've consciously stopped uh, checking email till um, you know, right till the time I sleep. No gadgets, more reading. Those things do matter. Don't burn out. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy the span of your career. It's important. And taking time out, basically taking the me time out, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Be very unselfish about it. It's all right. Other people will not miss you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Deeksha has a question which says uh, which are the leadership skills which were the most difficult to develop uh see with leadership uh, on any given day you're negotiating multiple things there are people issues um uh, there are crises um you have to be the coolest head your my joke is that uh, i'm the pinch hitter <laughs> in the team so the the crunch overs i'm sent to bat so please understand one thing if there's a crisis however big the team is the buck stops with you so you need to be agile you need to be able to think on your feet one thing which i read somewhere and i which i resonate with is uh, humor and is a very underrated leadership skill you know being able to just laugh things off is a very very underrated leadership skill i think we um even in my first job i remember my first manager was just would just never smile she only used to smile on my birthday and her birthday wow so for the long <laughs> so for the longest time uh, my picture of a manager was somebody who just smiles twice so i think once i grew older i realized no this is not who i am i need to have fun at work so i'd say um in general um uh, you need to understand uh once you grow in a role your um, it's just the googlies which will be thrown off you or thrown at you so you need to have a really really cool head you need to be able to segregate things find solutions quickly people also assume, assume you have a magic wand uh, things will magically <laughs> get sorted because they've been <laughs> they've been uh, delegated to you so sometimes that's hard which is why i came to the humor part mm -hmm. uh, just sort of laughing it off <laughs> occasionally it does help help helps let off the stress i'm sure there is another question from anit um oh well so i think she is a new mother as well i think that's where this is coming from but uh, she's asking you how it how is it balancing your job and the family and you know mostly raising your kid um it's hard 
I I am I'm I'm telling you my kid is near adult and there are still days I manage to feel guilty about God knows what he he doesn't even want me around now, so it's it's not easy Anit I wish I could say uh, you know as I said finding as much help for the non uh, the things uh, which can be outsourced helps uh, at one point I had a battery of people helping me cook clean etc. You know, my mom try again tried to make me feel guilty, saying, "You're not doing anything at home." I said, "That's all right. I I want to spend time with my child, and the uh, I want to be able to work. That's it. Beyond that, who is cooking what and uh, how dusted is my house and uh, how well it is kept is not something I'm focusing on right now. I can't. Right? Get all all the help you need. Uh, outsource uh, the kid with friends family occasionally make sure you find time to keep you sane but really bucket your priorities if it is the kid and work then that that should be it do not try and squeeze uh, squeeze in 50 other things about gourmet cooking etc and <laughs> a flawless house it's a myth as i said doesn't happen we have finite time we need to maximize it for things which matter So it is hard, uh, but hang in there. That's all I want to tell you. It gets better every every year. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, this I don't know who this is because they've not entered the uh, name uh, correctly. But uh, the question is how uh, we should balance. How should we balance our work and personal life in your twenties when most women prefer to be at the peak of learning, considering the fear of missing out after marriage and kids. I think you've just answered it, but. Uh, Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, as I said, I was a very young mother, uh, and uh, I was in my uh, peak of my career, and I thought I will quickly get done with parenting and then move on. It's it's always both those decisions. So I'm also asked, do you think that was a good decision? I say, in retrospect, it seems good, but at that point, it seemed really bad because I was heading internal comms at 26, and wow. suddenly you just let it all go to a <laughs> kid. So it didn't seem like a great decision, but again, as I said, see the point is, if I had taken that decision, I I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed my motherhood. I also in, there was struggle. I made sure I continued working. It was heartbreaking to be working at one fourth of the salary I was working. But I, the important thing was I wanted to work, uh, keep myself in touch with uh, the profession I was a part of, and didn't look at the money part for a while. Till my kid was old enough, so it's a balancing act, really. Only thing is, in twenties again, uh, really look after your physical and mental health. Again, reiterating, see so many young people burning out. Uh, keep consciously, uh, you know, let go occasionally. It's fine. Everything can't be perfect. It's it's perfectly all right to be imperfect at times. It's fine. Uh- Priya, DEI initiatives are, you know, this is something that is happening all across the industry today. But, uh, you know, do you think somewhere the resources, the amount of time that we spend on it is, uh, it doesn't catch up with the intent that is there, you know, of doing DEI, of running DEI programs? And, uh, you know, what are you, uh, you know, how are you contributing? Do you really have a seat at the table when you are, uh, you know, maybe your company is doing diversity programs? So we have a DNI council. There are five of us. Uh, yeah, of course, I have a seat at the table, and uh, the CEO um, uh, Samir is very passionate about it. And in fact, we decided to have twenty-five percent women in leadership. We took a conscious call because, as I said, middle to senior management is where you see the drop off. So basically, mentoring younger women in the organization to sort of get them, push them to from uh, middle to senior management, understanding the challenges they have. We started a mothers program recently. Uh, we are looking at uh, making sure the transition back to work is easy. It's very hard. It's not easy. It's not a cakewalk. Uh, there's going to be a daycare we are starting in office soon. Uh, so I mean, we are taking uh, steps in that direction. And uh, uh, Riley, in some ways, we're also lucky because uh, when I uh, was working, the maternity leave was three months, and we had to. The expectations is. was we will get back to work in 3 months and it, it's hard i mean it's not easy you've not figured things out in a 3 month old infant is very hard to leave right and uh, 
uh, daycares were not that great forget everything else i remember struggling getting maternity wear <laughs> when i was working i worked till the last day uh, the f- joke in my office used to be we were worried you'll deliver an office <laughs> but i was fine i was healthy i i, I didn't i didn't see the and i had a very chill doctor she said people have kids all the time go enjoy your life so <laughs> she was uh, It, it was all fine, but I'm saying things are changing. Things are changing for the better. You see, so many more women. I mean, I've I was once in an organization in a team where I was the only woman for the in in a group of 25 men. Those ratios have changed. I think it's it's been a long, hard journey. We women have fought to get get a, t- a seat at the table. So I think DNI initiatives are coming to fruition. I see women also are a lot more sorted. They're ambitious. They know what they want. Mm-hmm. Um, um, they're they're also willing to work hard, put go that extra mile. So I I do see things changing. Most organizations are taking those steps, and we will see you know this come to fruit in the next couple of years for sure. I'm rooting for it. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't see any more questions coming up, but I would like to end the discussion with asking you. You know, this year's uh, theme for IWD is how do you break the uh, how do you break the bias, right? Breaking the bias, right? So I wanted to ask you, what is your pledge for this year? How do you intend to break the bias? I say this all the time. I I think I'm someone who always challenges the status quo. I intend to continue doing that. I don't think we should box ourselves as women, mother, professionals. Those are biases. so break the same challenge the status quo don't get boxed i think it's very important <laughs> that is so fantastic mm. rashmi has uh, said that you're amazing and very inspiring yeah i know i thanks rashmi <laughs> great to know that <laughs> thanks rashmi uh priya thank you so much for spending all your time with us this has been really really engaging it was wonderful talking to you all and uh, thank you so much riley and uh, priyanka i uh big hugs to you as well women's day high five <laughs> keep doing great work thank you so much